Hello everyone. So I figured I'd show you this extremely hard game of Kerbal that I'm playing. This is how I'm trying to reach space. <laughs> I've actually already managed to reach a suborbital trip using very similar technologies. So I'm hopeful that I'll be able to reach orbit. But I want to reach orbit on a northern trajectory because um, that way I can get myself some polar ice caps and I need me science. Um, so I've got a lot of mods installed. The mod that's making me go through this trouble is the tech tree mod where I found a tech tree that someone built that's hard as nails. This thing is really tough. Uh, you have to buy through three um, three tech starts, but three, uh, you have to get three upgrades before you get a jet engine. And even now, about 500 science points in, I just now got my very first non-air breathing engine, and it is the tiny, tiny probe engine. So uh, this is not an easy game, and this is the craft that I've built to try and reach orbit, and it uses a decoupler to attach the wings and the tail, so I can't use any time acceleration because it'll rip right apart. The other reason this is a little bit more difficult than it should be is uh, the deadly reentry mod, which means that uh, at high velocities in the atmosphere, things don't go right. And unfortunately for me, high velocities in the atmosphere is what I need in order to reach orbital speed. So um, it's not an easy task to balance out the the bendy nature of this vehicle with uh, uh, with the nature with the with the uh, uh, aggressive vibrating uh, that happens at high speeds which you'll see soon enough as we're starting to push the sound push past the sound barrier and we're going to suffer re-entry effects any second here now if you've ever wondered about intake air once you go below 0.5 intake air these turbojets start to drop off rapidly so I'm trying to milk them a little bit, um, but I don't want to stay too low because there we are, re-entry effects. Um, because you get these re-entry effects and these things, if you waver at all, they will cause you to flip. So I have to keep on this course even though I'm just about to burn out. So what I'm going to do is leave it behind the instant it starts to uh, falter. <laughs> Now that should have given us plenty of velocity to reach orbit. So there are a couple of other mods that I've got installed and you might be able to tell that one of them is a life support mod. I really love life support mods because they make the late game quite hard. Um, and most of the time in this Kerbal career mode, the late game is just a matter of send a probe to Jewel or whatever, send a probe to any, any given planet and harvest 400 science and that's it but the life support mod means that you can't send people out there and I've got remote tech installed as well so I can't really use probes very well uh, without people so uh, it's it's uh, it's gonna be fun the downside is that the probes are actually um, there's no time delay in this version yet uh, so I have to uh, I hope that he in he gets time delay in it working because that's the only thing that actually makes using probes difficult uh, otherwise, you can just set up some long-range towers, and that's all fine. This is going to be a little bit tight. I'm definitely going to reach orbit, but I wanted to reach 100,000, and that jet did not get me as high as I was hoping, or as fast as I was hoping. That's it. All right, so now I've got to do uh, the top half here. <laughs> Let's ditch the old engine there. I don't need it. Go away. There you are. Alright, so 100,000 please. There we are. And now I should have plenty of fuel left to actually establish a circular orbit around the poles. Alright, let's start collecting some science, shall we? I've already gone on a suborbital flight, so you can see that I'm not getting full science for these. And I think we're highlands as far as the eye can see, so... You may have noticed that the EVA suit also has life support, so that's actually taken from the ship and put into the suit. 
um, which means that you can easily run out of life support uh, in EVA. Uh, it's long enough that it's not going to be an issue here, um, but if I was uh, taking a buggy somewhere and I was just sitting in a seat rather than inside a cockpit, it would be a serious difficulty. Um, good. All right, let's circularize our orbit. Good enough. And now I can gather some science. The only science I really need is the uh, tundra. Actually, I got a little bit of tundra before because there's random patches of tundra scattered across the planet for no discernible reason. But I didn't get any ice caps, so I need to get myself some ice caps. Shores, that'll do. It's not worth a lot because I've already got that, but it's worth better than nothing. Water, good. I can handle water. Still water. I guess there's actually quite a lot of water here. Still water. I already got water. Ice caps! Yay! Eight science. Story of the experiments. I'm also going to go ahead and grab the gravioli reading. Oh, I have to get back in. There we are. 60. Hopefully that'll end up worth 20 science, because it lies. Um, the science has all been changed as to how much it's actually worth, uh, which is problematic. So now I've got a couple of options. I can keep going around, but I wanted to actually finish this video with a landing, um, which means that I can't really do it if I uh, keep circling the Earth interminably. So I'm going to go ahead and go around to the South Pole without bothering to stop anywhere along the way. Um, in theory, I might be able to get some Badlands. Yeah, okay, fine. We'll try and get some Badlands. Uh, they're, they're actually a little bit difficult to reach. So I need to make sure that I'm tilted so my solar panel catches the sun. But unfortunately, that means I can't see myself. Grasslands. Do I already have grasslands? I can't remember. Oh, I'm floating away. That's no good. Lights. Why am I upside down? What the hell? I'm, I missed again. What the heck? There we are. More water. Uh, I think that's it. If I could have... Okay, I'm getting back in because this is turning into uh, a real dangerous situation where the ladder's malfunctioning for some reason and I definitely don't want to risk um, getting caught in space. So, I'm not going to let you die. All right, here we go. Now, it may look like I'm about to accelerate forward, but you have to remember that my engine is stacked on my roof, so I'm actually decelerating. And you can see that's true. And we'll splash down somewhere over here. Oh, we might actually splash down on the desert. That'll be interesting. I don't think we will, though. I think we'll fall short. All right, so let's get rid of this engine. It's just in the way. Goodbye, engine. And now let's tilt ourselves so that we're ready for re-entry because um, otherwise we will lose, uh, we will die, <laughs> which would be no good. But what I'm actually worried about is this gravioli detector. So I'm going to rotate so that it's on top. And then I'm going to keep myself pointed such that the ha entry hatch part catches most of the re-entry burn because that actually does matter. Um, with the deadly re-entry mod. Whoa, that's not really what I expected to happen. I wonder what just happened. Well, whatever. Come on. I don't have enough patience for this four times physics stuff. Oop, too much. I was just trying to adjust a little bit, and I ended up adjusting 
quite a lot. All right, so five, four, three, two, one, burn. All right, it's it's pretty safe. I'm not I'm not too worried about it. If it doesn't hit a thousand degrees, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, we survived, no problem. This comes with some ablative, uh, ablative shielding attached, and you can see I burned through about about uh, two fifths of it. Oh, I know what the problem is and why it was behaving so erratically. No, I guess I don't. For some reason, it was turning really, really weird, but that's okay. I don't. We survived, and that's all that really matters in the end. Splash down. So they've made the uh, the parachutes much better about not ripping off at high physics acceleration, but deadly reentry has introduced uh, a different problem. So I still have to decelerate because the g forces uh, don't get correctly blunted if you're if you're at four times. And so if I had hit that point at four times speed, there's a likelihood that Jebediah would have been splattered because deadly reentry does give you a g-force cap that your that your characters can handle um, so uh, it's not an easy game and it's going to remain really hard because I've got this life support stuff so it's going to be difficult to get to the moon uh, and it's going to be way difficult to get to you know Mars or whatever uh, Eve um, but I've, I've also got uh, remote tech and all that stuff I'm not sure whether I told you that or not well whatever assuming the video doesn't crash let's see how much science we got Ah, 44.1 science, which is just enough to buy the next tech tree element. So this is it, the place you start. There are no engines. This is the first thing you buy. There are no engines. <laughs> you finally get an engine here in an, air, in an airship part, uh, which actually made my job a lot easier because I down, downloaded the airship pack. But then I went over here and I was like, I want, I want the rocket engines. They must be down here with, with propulsion, right? No, you wasted like 200 science. They're actually up here, around here, back here, over here, over here, over here, over here, over here, there. There's your first rocket part. This, I'm sure, actually contains actual rocket parts, but I have to buy this first. And this contains nothing of interest. <laughs> so I'm gonna buy it. Oh good, it did. Uh, yes, yes, there are my actual rocket parts. I need another hundred science. This is hard, and uh, and the remote tech makes it harder, and the life support makes it harder. This is a lot more fun than Kerbal has been for a while. Um, if you've gotten bored of Kerbal, I recommend you make it really hard. It really changes things up.